What's going on guys, Bengal again here coming back at you with another video. Today we are going to be rebuilding the Kansas City Chiefs. Now, you guys have been watching the NFL at all in the year of uh, 2018. You know that the Chiefs don't really need a rebuild right now as Patrick Mahomes has set the league on fire with unbelievable, literally record-setting numbers through the first few weeks of the season. He's been the best quarterback in the NFL. Touchdowns, yardage, he's been in incredible super fun player to watch at texas tech and he's doing the same at uh at the you know in kansas city with the chiefs here in his it's not his rookie year but it's his first year starting so it's just more of a rearranging the kansas city chiefs and a rebuilding the kansas city chiefs we're gonna see if we can take them to the promised land of course led by the phenom pat mahomes so let's go ahead and check out this roster in this new roster update pat mahomes is up to an 86 overall he still only has quick development. We could move that up to his star, as I think it'd be warranted, but we're not going to. I think that's disingenuous for the franchise. So we're going to stay away from doing that. We're very close to another skill point, though, with Patrick Mahomes the second, And I'll get him up to an 87 overall very shortly. We've got Kareem Hunt in the backfield, Spencer Ware, uh, even Damian Williams. And who are you? Who are you, D. Williams? Daryl Williams, the rookie out of LSU. Okay. We got Tyreek Hill who's, you know, looking like one of the best receivers in the NFL. Top 10, I think, for sure at this point. There are so many elite receivers, though, in the NFL at this point. It's tough to really get a definitive list. Sammy Watkins has played well. I like Demarcus Robinson at Florida. He hasn't been too much in the NFL so far. And then Chris Conley is just a workout warrior. He's an athletic freak. We'll see if we can develop him over the course of this franchise. On the offensive line, uh, Mitchell Schwartz is up to an 85. I know in Giants franchise, he's a 75 overall. Uh, still on the Chiefs. I was checking out their roster as, you know, this roster update over the course of this season has been very good to certain players. I guess Mitchell Schwartz being one of them. So even though he's uh, 29 years old, we're probably going to hold on to him as he's an 85 overall, not a 75 overall. Laurent Duvernay Tardif is an incredibly smart player uh, as I think he's he's got a, a doctorate. I'm pretty sure. <laughs> I'm not positive. I think he has a, a PhD. But he's going to stay at right guard probably. Mitch Morris, we might look to upgrade. Cameron Irving, we might look to upgrade. And then Eric Fisher, we're absolutely going to upgrade. Uh, the entire left side and center we're probably going to get rid of. Defensively, there are some really talented players here. Whether we hold on to all of them remains to be seen. I doubt it. A lot of players are just too old for my liking. For example, Justin Houston is probably close to 30. 29. He does have star development. I'd like to hold on to him. But... Over the course of this rebuild, he probably will be moved. Uh, Ron Parker absolutely is going to get traded. He is just not where I want him to be for a 31-year-old player. He's 81. If he was a 91, we're talking, but like 81, we're probably going to have to get rid of him. Kendall Fuller uh, is going to stay. I like him better as a nickel cornerback, so we're going to try to get two other stud corners. Orlando skandrick has got to go. Steven Nelson's all right. Uh, and then a defensive line. I love Chris Jones. Xavier Williams is all right. We got Derek, what is that, Naughty? Is that, that, is that how that's pronounced? Jarvis Jenkins, Alan Bailey. Alan Bailey, I thought, should be a little bit of higher overall uh, going into this, but he's only a 79. Breland Speaks, we might look to get starting action. I like D Ford, but his overall in-game is not incredible. I like Reggie Ragland a lot at Alabama. Anthony Hitchens is all right. Uh, we got Tano Passan on here. There are some good players who are borderline for me about whether they're going to stay or not. It's pretty much what value can we get for some of these guys. So, immediate upgrade will be the offensive line. It, you know, it really needs to be boosted, and that might be in the offseason. But really what I'm looking at is cornerback, and I'm looking at potentially some of our pass rushers. Defensive line, outside linebackers, stuff like that, maybe even change out of safety. We'll have to see what happens. Pretty big first trade. We're trading Ron Parker and Orlando Skandrick as well as a third round pick for Levante David. Now, Levante David doesn't fit the scheme right now as we are sitting in a 3-4. We could go to a 4-3. I can tell you that certain overalls will jump if we do that. Chris Jones will go up playing defensive tackle. Um, Justin Houston will go up playing defensive end. We don't really have great personnel for that. I mean, we could move Reggie Ragland outside linebacker, keep Anthony Hitchens on the inside. We might change to a 4-3. We might have to do that. Eric Murray is our new starting free safety. I think that's who that is. Uh, it is Eric Murray, former Minnesota Golden Gopher. 
How good are you? Mm, not even at all. Okay. If we don't transition into a 4-3, Levante David's just going to play middle linebacker. All right, so we're in a 4-3 now. We've changed the scheme a little bit. We're sitting in a base 4-3, and the personnel works really, really well. Justin Houston's up to an 89. Chris Jones up to an 87. Small overall boost, only plus ones, but that's fine. We're going to look to get Allen Bailey out of here. Still look to upgrade cornerback. Breland Speaks has, uh, has been moved to right end. D Ford has been moved down to defensive end as well. And I think the linebacker core is really good. We're right where we need to be. Reggie Ragland bumps up a lot to an 81 overall. And just got to work on the secondary now. Eric Berry is obviously a rock there. But the other guys, not so much. So D Ford and Allen Bailey have ridiculously bad contracts. So they need to go. Justin Houston's getting paid a lot. I get that. But those contracts are too much for bad players. And granted, bad is a relative term. But it's too much for, you know, high 70s. Eric Fisher, three and a half per year almost. Not good either. This trade is going to be D Ford, Xavier Williams, and a second round pick for Adrian Amos. That's quite the upgrade at safety. We're going to move him over to free safety. He's kind of one of those hybrid style players that would excel in a free safety role, would excel in a strong safety role. He's very versatile, but he will be playing free safety for us. Eric Berry is kind of the same way, but I would rather have Eric Berry stay at strong safety. Adrian Amos play free safety. I think it's a better combo for what we have working. The defense is already looking like one of the best in the entire NFL. Tremendous free safety, strong safety. Our defensive line's very good. It's not phenomenal, but it is, it is pretty good with Chris Jones and Justin Houston. That's a great combo. Looking to get a cornerback, a defensive tackle now is a pretty glaring need. What can I trade though? It's going to be Breland, Breland Speaks, Alan Bailey, Daniel Sorensen, if we can get value for him, Steven Nelson. We might look to do a lot of that in the offseason. I'm not sure how much value we have left on the team in terms of older players to get rid of, but Alan Bailey has to go. D Ford's probably got to go as well. We just traded D Ford, so all right, we're <laughs> looking good. Another pretty big trade here, Eric Fisher, two second round picks, one this year, one next year for Leonard Williams. I think that's fair value for us. We're giving up kind of a lot here with those two second round picks, but I think it's going to be rare that we'd be able to, you know, take a player that would, you know, amount to Leonard Williams for the defense. I just, I just think it's well worth it uh, to give away some of our picks for just a superstar caliber player on the defensive line. He, of course, is going to play defensive tackle. It's kind of what he did at USC. He was an absolute dominant force. Although I think they did play a 3 4, so he was still a defensive end uh, at USC in that 3 4 defense. If I do recall, it's been a while since Leonard Williams has been in college. But this is a good defensive line. Allen Bailey's the one piece that I don't like there right now. Other than that, we're in a great spot. We're going to try Daniel Sorensen and a sixth round pick for a third from the Miami Dolphins. Want to get a couple picks back and. On that same notion, we're going to go ahead and trade uh, Allen Bailey probably for a draft pick. If I can get a second, that'd be phenomenal. Not sure if that's going to be possible. Allen Bailey, a 4 and a 5 next year, is going to get us a first-round pick from the Baltimore Ravens. If they had a second-round pick, I probably would have gone after that. But I'd rather trade some later-round picks in order to pick up that top first-round pick. That's awesome. If the Ravens suck, which I hope that they do, that's going to be a very good pick. Uh, they could be decent. I don't really know. That's probably going to be it for the trading that we do here in season number one. Breland Speaks is going to start at right end. A uh, decent player out of Ole Miss. We'll see what he can do. He's a rookie, actually, in real life. Uh, and in, in this, obviously. So, hopefully the production's there. We've got a good defense. Our defense is sick. The offense is pretty good, obviously. If we have Pat Mahomes, Kareem Hunt, Tyree Kill firing all cylinders, we're going to be in business. Travis Kelsey, obviously one of the best tight ends in the NFL top two I think for sure so this is a team that can definitely get it done I'm gonna go into free agency probably and sign a better left tackle start my fantasy draft what I don't know why start your fantasy draft would have been there this is not a fantasy draft franchise bad and wild right now not a ton of offensive line talent in free agency like none at all no one that we can plug and play uh, so, oof, I don't want to start any of these guys at any position. <laughs> We're going to be in a tough spot with no left tackle this year. 
How do we want to handle this? All right, we're going to be trading Damian Williams, Spencer Ware, and a future three for Marcus Cannon. We're giving away a bit here. I don't really like to give away picks at all, but we really, really needed to go out and get an offensive lineman. Marcus Cannon actually fits the scheme as well, which is kind of neat. Uh, Mitchell Schwartz actually is not far behind either. We're going to move him to left tackle. Marcus Cannon is going to stay at right tackle. We had to go out and trade for an offensive lineman, even if it's just like a one-year rental style thing where we'll you know trade him or do whatever. We need offensive line help. We couldn't go out there with a 65 overall for Mahomes. Just didn't want to do that. We're not going to do that. The team's in a good spot now, though, in a much better place with Marcus Cannon. So we're going to go ahead and simulate now to the midseason mark. We're also going to upgrade Justin Houston. And as much as I do want to go in a power move here, I'm going to go in a run stopper because he fits the scheme. He's going to go up to a 90, and he's going to be getting more XP over the course of the season. And he gets a plus two to finesse move anyway. So we're actually uh, in a fantastic spot there with finesse move going up. He's got 85 power, 80 finesse move now. Fantastic combo. And uh, let's go ahead and simulate. We are cruising at the midseason mark six and two as we should be leading the AFC West. And we are. We got two games over uh, even more. What is that? Two and a half with uh, the Raiders already getting their third loss. Six and two is in a really, really good spot. Beat the Broncos who are one and seven. I don't know what's going on there. We're going to use some coach XP. You guys don't know, I usually always, always, always buy increased player weekly goal XP as the first coach upgrade that I ever do. It's just so influential and impactful for the entire series, so I make sure to do that. We got impending free agents. Adrian Amos, Harrison Butker is a kicker I want to retain, Chris Conley, Steven Nelson, Anthony Sherman, Mitch Morse. I should have looked into who was a free agent. Because I absolutely would have gotten rid of Chris Conley and Steven Nelson. Absolutely would have, because I don't really plan on retaining them. Well, Chris Conley, actually, maybe. Anthony Sherman, I would like to retain. Uh, Steven Nelson, I don't really have interest in, though. Anthony Sherman, Chris Conley re-signed. Chris Conley we got for almost nothing, so I was happy to do that. Harrison Butker, Adrian Amos. Um, whoa, okay, Harrison Butker did not re-sign yet. He wants uh, more in the salary. That's fine. We'll be able to resign, uh, resign him, retain him at the end of the year. Adrian Amos resigns. That's a big deal. So we're cruising right now. We're in cruise control. Uh, control. We got a good team. We got a good squad. I'm going to upgrade and then show you guys the process uh, and the product, I should say, of that upgrading. Anthony Hitchens face scan. His head looks a little bit too small for his body. And by a little bit, I mean like a lot. That's way too small. I'll, <laughs> I'll talk to somebody about that that'll... Uh, hopefully be changed Reggie Ragland's head looks like a peanut this is like the same Jonathan Joseph situation we had uh, in that Texans rebuild it's just way too small also I don't know why I did I say Reggie Ragland instead of Anthony Hitchens when we we're talking about the small head I don't know why I feel like I may have I definitely mean Anthony Hitchens and not Reggie Ragland so if I misspoke I know everyone loves to point it out whenever that happens on the rare occasion that it does, but no, I, I, uh, I meant Anthony Hitchens, clearly. All right, this is the upgraded team. 87 offense, 91 defense. Any special teams upgrades I may have missed? Yeah, Harrison Butker has one, and I don't really care about DeAnthony Thomas, so we're not going to worry about that. He's up to an 81 overall now, and it's funny that it's the only one that I showed because it's the least exciting position probably next to punter on the field. A lot of good stuff going on, a lot of upgrades. Nothing two major report i think the highest amount of skill points that anybody had the most amount was pat mahomes with two and a number of other players had two as well some didn't have any which was disappointing sammy Watkins, travis kelsey falling under that category the team's good though we are really on a roll headed into the playoffs i have high hopes for this team 11 12 wins maybe 13 maybe so we indeed make the playoffs finishing 12 and 4 fantastic season for uh, this Chiefs team although I will say Pat Mahomes had 20 touchdowns only five interceptions good ratio there incredible ratio not a lot of touchdowns and not a whole ton of yards either under 4,000 for Mahomes Kareem Hunt led the charge about 1,300 yards nine touchdowns Darrell Williams um, had eight touchdowns 
That might even be Durrell. But Sammy Watkins, 639 yards, 6 TDs, almost 1,100 yards for Tyreek Hill, 4 touchdowns, 6 touchdowns for Travis Kelsey. Good ball distribution, but we're looking for more yards and more touchdowns from Mahomes in season number two for sure. Defensively, Anthony Hitchens had a season. Almost 150 tackles, 8 tackles for loss, 7.5 sacks and 2 picks. What a ridiculous season for Anthony Hitchens. Unbelievable. 15 tackles for loss for Leonard Williams would lead the team. 12 for Justin Houston and Chris Jones. Anthony Hitchens also with 8. Quarterback sacks, 12 for Justin Houston. And then 7.5 for a middle linebacker in Anthony Hitchens. I mean, that's crazy. Levante David led her team in interceptions with four. Two for Anthony Hitchens was number two, who also had three forced fumbles with, you know, which, surprise, surprise, led the team. Fumble recoveries, two for Anthony Hitchens. He's the only guy on our entire team to recover a fumble. No defensive touchdowns. That's got to be defensive player of the year, surely. Blake Bortles, Robbie Bortles wins MVP of the 13-3 and three Jacksonville Jaguars. No Mahomes in here. A little bit unfortunate. AFC Offensive Player of the Year goes to Le'Veon Bell. No Chiefs. Defensive Player of the Year, of course, is Anthony Hitchens. Levante David at number two. A lot of Jags in there. A lot of Jags. One, two, three, four, five. Five Jags in the top ten. Offensive Rookie of the Year goes to Baker Mayfield. Daryl or Darrell Williams in there at number five. And then Defensive Rookie of the Year, Minka Fitzpatrick. Traymond Smith at number four. And Breland Speaks at number eight. Interesting. All right, so good season for everybody, uh, all things considered. We're going to advance to the divisional. It's the Cleveland Browns finishing 11-5. and five. They're back in the playoffs for the first time in quite some time, a very long time, the early 2000s, where their, uh, their quarterback was Kelly Holcomb. Interesting. Uh, interesting. I remember the video that I made about the Browns going to the playoffs. You guys haven't seen that. It's worth a YouTube search, maybe. But, all right, let's go ahead and upgrade this team. Things are in a good spot. We're playing with a lot of confidence, and hopefully we can beat the uh, Cleveland Browns. That's a weird-looking Eric Berry face scan as well. I don't know if I like that. <laughs> all right, the team is looking very, very good, 88 overall. 89 offense, 93 defense. That might even go up a little bit more as we upgrade Harrison Butker. Who got up to an 83 overall. And a lot of that is confidence. We're going to go back in accurate. He's up to an 84 overall now. Of course, it's just awareness, 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 awareness. And that does not impact our team overall. We're going to stay at an 88. And I will not be playing any of these playoff games. I won't be playing the moments on them. Because it's very early in the actual franchise rebuild video. So, we unfortunately lose to the Browns. And, um... We lose by a lot, too. 26-14, to 14, I can see it in the top left. But I guess it wasn't our year. In Season 2 or 3, probably 3, we'll play the actual playoff games when we get there. But for right now, I just wasn't really feeling playing the, uh, the game so early on in the franchise. I feel like we're not leading up to anything if we win the Super Bowl year one especially. So the Browns actually beat the Packers. In the Super Bowl, 23-14, I will show you guys that as uh, we lost to the Super Bowl winner, at least. But unbelievable. The Browns have won the Super Bowl, 23-14 over the Green Bay Packers. Very interesting. Got to bring back Harrison Butker. We also might have somebody in here that I didn't see earlier because we traded for them. But it looks like it's just going to be Harrison Butker. I'm going to raise the salary. Uh, we'll sign him to a five-year deal. So, we'll do we'll do 12.3 over five. Harrison Butker re-signs, and the rest I don't really have an interest. We're going to upgrade either through the draft or free agency. It's not a huge deal. Trevor Williams is the top cornerback, the top player in all of free agency. Here's the thing. Um... We get Trevor Williams kind of a lot, it feels like. And maybe we don't. Maybe that's just my my thought on it because he's always in free agency. He never gets re-signed by the Chargers. I just... I don't feel like getting him for this one. I will say that Dante Fowler Jr. is here. The Redskins... I guess was the bug fixed where the Redskins and Dolphins don't overbid on every single player? The Dolphins are still out here doing their thing. I don't see the Redskins too much anymore. 
Dante Fowler is a player I would like to pursue. So we actually brought in Dante Fowler Jr. I like to see that. He's going to slot in very nicely at right end, giving us free reign to trade Breland Speaks. We have a lot of upgrade points uh, for Traymond Smith. The problem is, like, he's not ever going to be usable, really. And I need to get two better cornerbacks. I should have went after uh, Trevor Williams. That was foolish of me not to. But for the sake of mixing it up, uh, I'm all right with not going after him. Traymond Smith is up to a 73. He's never going to be usable. He's just not. We need to get two better cornerbacks ahead of Kendall Fuller so I can knock him down to slot cornerback where he's going to be best. Currently, he's not there, but I do want that. That'd be ideal for me. The defensive line's great. Um, I'd rather have Tyree Kill in the slot. We're going to make some changes, but it's time to scout. Got to work on the offensive line. Got to get a cornerback. We've got two first-round picks. One in the top 10, one way further down. We should be able to make some moves here. All right, draft time. I don't know what we're going to do with our top 10 pick yet. I don't know what we're going to do. We're going to simulate first and foremost, and then we're going to make that decision. It's rare that I would do this, but my first pick is going to be a guard at number six, Jordan Cherry out of Alabama. A big issue for me is a lot of Alabama offensive linemen don't necessarily work out in the NFL. Good thing for this is it's a video game, so don't really have to worry about that. There are a number of Alabama linemen who have played quite well in the NFL. Jordan Cherry looks like a beast. Tremendous top three skills, great combine, like what I'm seeing. He's going to be a 77 overall normal development. That one hurts a lot. That one hurts. That was, that was not good value for the pick, and his development is just normal. That's annoying. Now, he is good. 81 run block, 84 pass block. Decent strength, run block finesse is high, impact blocking super high. Uh, I hate that aware or I hate that development though. I really do. This trade is going to be a one, a six, and a seven. It's a future six for a first round pick from the Ravens next year. I expect that pick to be pretty valuable. I didn't really like anyone on the board at this particular juncture, so we're going to simulate to the third round, see what we can do. Still want to take a center, maybe another guard that we can move over. We're going to go cornerback here, actually. Jordan Cross out of West Virginia. Good size. Not a tremendous athlete, but he has good top three skills. So I like him in that department. He's going to be 74 overall, ranked number 90 in the class. We obviously did not draft him at number one, so it's not uh, as much of a reach as they're saying it might be. However, uh, the value has not been good for me in this draft. It's a little bit unusual, and it's disappointing for sure. Maybe I should have gone with a center. We're going to go wide receiver here, JT Black out of Maine. All right, looks okay. 74 overall, rank number 69. That's our first. It's not a reach. We obviously didn't draft him at number one. This was our actual first good pick. In the fifth round, we took a player uh, who is a third-round caliber player. So I will take that early third. He's good. He's good. Not bad. However, he probably won't play that much as that's going to do it for the draft. Uh, one of my worst, I'll say. One of my worst ever drafts. So that's, that's cool. The number one overall pick was an 84 overall. Christian Torrance out of Florida and another 84 overall free safety out of Oregon in the, uh, in the top five. So we missed out on two absolutely crazy players. Christian Torrance would have been one that we probably would have looked to take. 86 man, 75 zone, 95 speed. So he's got good speed and good man coverage. I feel like 84 overall is a little bit high considering his zone's not that great. And then, I don't know, play rec's all right. Awareness is all right. He's, I don't know, that feels like a generous 84. What about Deshaun Oliver? To the Giants, all right. My favorite team. 93 speed, 81 zone, 78 hit power. He looks pretty good. I would I would say I prefer this 84 to uh, this 84. And uh, we missed out on some decent players, but not at positions that we needed. So Lee Mathis would have been a good pick that we could have gotten. Progressions hit us a little bit. Marcus Cannon dips below an 80. Mitchell Schwartz is well on his way, which I am not a particularly large fan of. What can you do, though? Unfortunately, that is the way of Madden regression. I'm going to see if they can turn that down uh, for Madden 20 because it just seems a little bit too overpowered right now. Uh, I'll give my feedback. Just, it's not great. It's not great. I hate regression when it hits so hard. But we're still in a good spot. I am going to look to upgrade the offensive line still. 
not sure where we're going to find the value for the trade, but uh, certainly you're going to look. Any free agents that teams missed out on that we could potentially sign? We need a backup running back. And uh, we should be able to find that in J.D. McKissick. Could go Fear Amir, Amir Abdullah. I'm going to do that. He's going to be a good complimentary back to Kareem Hunt, who is now a power back. Amir Abdullah is certainly not that. But, I don't know, Kareem Hunt is kind of a complete back. So, even though we have his chemistry or his scheme fit up to power back, he's very elusive. He can catch. He's a very complete running back, is Kareem Hunt. I don't know, I love a good storyline. I'm shocked that this went through as easy as it did, but Derek Nadi, Freeland speaks for Kyle Fuller. The Fuller brothers reunite. Of course, uh, they both went to Virginia Tech. Were they teammates at the same time? I think they would have been for a season. Uh, Kyle Fuller's 27. I believe Kendall Fuller is 23. He's 24 in this. So, he, yeah, he, he would be uh, would be 23 in real life. They may have played together for a season. I don't remember. I know they both went to VT. But that's a fun combo. The Fuller brothers at cornerback. I had to. I had to. It's a fun storyline. Why not? We're going to sign uh, BJ Finney. He's a guy that's played some center. Of course, the former Kansas State uh, alum. Or I guess he's still, he's currently Kansas State alum. Uh, the former Wildcat. He's played some center with the Steelers, if I'm not mistaken, for the injured Marquise Pouncey. He will slide in at center. He's going to be our new starting center for this season. It's not a great option, but I chose a number two cornerback over a center. We'll see if that comes back to bite me. I doubt it. The offensive line is not the best part of this team. Hopefully Pat Mahomes and the rest of the playmakers on this team can make up for that. I think it should be able to. Let's go ahead and simulate now to the midseason mark. I doubt we're going to go undefeated, but that sure would be nice. We are 4-4 four four at the midseason mark. Not tremendous. The Chargers are 5-2. Broncos still struggling. This is the team 89 defense, nine, or excuse me, 89 offense, 97 defense. As that offensive line needs to improve, and we'll do that. Tyreek Hill will be an impending free agent. We'll look to re-sign him as well as Chris Jones, Kendall Fuller, Leonard Williams, Reggie Ragland. Pretty big class. We'll look to retain those top five guys. We've re-signed Reggie Ragland and Tyreek Hill as well as everybody in between. That's going to be a pretty effective mid-season uh, mark you know, uh, contract negotiating for us. We're going to simulate now to the playoffs. It's going to be important that we win out or come as, as close as we can. Because it's going to be a very close race to win the AFC West here. We've got a couple good teams there. The Chargers are always very good. And we snuck into the playoffs at 10-6. and six. Chargers won 11-5. And, five, and uh, we came pretty close to winning out. Lost two. But I think we, we won the games that we needed to clearly to make the playoffs. Pat Mahomes, better year this year. 4,200 yards, 31 touchdowns, 11 interceptions is, is more than he had last year, obviously. But, eh, you know, pretty good season. Great season for Kareem Hunt again. Touchdowns are down, but that's all right. Pat Mahomes got him. A couple of receivers close to 1,000 yards. Nobody got it. But Travis Kelsey and Tyreek Hill both with nine touchdowns as they couldn't get double digits, but very close. Defensively, Levante David leads her team in tackles. And uh, tackles for loss goes to Leonard Williams with 16, Justin Hughes with 14, 12 for Anthony Hitchens, and 11 for Dante Fowler Jr. Anthony Hitchens has played amazingly, I'll say. Justin Houston with 11 sacks, 7 for Chris Jones, 6.5 for Dante Fowler Jr., 6 for Leonard Williams. Interceptions for Kendall Fuller, Levante David, Eric Berry, Kyle Fuller, and Anthony Hitchens both got one. Forced fumbles, how do we do? Uh, not too many, a decent amount. And then defensive touchdowns, probably none and none. Let's go ahead and check out the yearly awards. Hope to see Pat Mahomes up here near the top. And we don't. He's number 10. That's all right. AFC Offensive Player of the Year goes to Deshaun Watson. Pat Mahomes in there at number 6. Defensive Player of the Year goes to Ryan Shazier. Levante David in there at number 4. No other Chiefs from what I saw unless I missed uh, Anthony Hitchens, which I didn't. Offensive Rookie of the Year goes to Scott Wyatt. Defensive Rookie of the Year goes to Lewis or Jordan Cross in there at number 8. We're going to go ahead and upgrade this team. In the offseason, it will be a priority to upgrade the offensive line over any other position. Got to improve center and probably tackle because Mitchell Schwartz is going to regress. 
he just is going to he's going to not be that 82 overall he's going to be in the 70s marcus cannon will be uh even lower in the 70s probably like 76 we need to improve we do i know this obviously center is a, a position of need but i'm gonna go ahead and upgrade these players i'll see you guys for the uh first round of the playoffs for us <laughs> pat mahomes just got a throw power upgrade why <laughs> it's not necessary 99 throw power though uh can't really complain that's pretty good this is the team 99 defense 91 offense I always start talking and then I forget I never check special teams. Harrison Butker. He's kicking butt. Kerr. Some of my best work there. Uh, per usual, just awareness upgrades. He's up to an 86 overall, though. That's probably one of the best kickers in the entire league as far as overall goes. Not going to worry about Fear Amir. I'm going to worry about the New England Patriots, though. But not before spending some coach XP. That's going to be on the offensive line and maybe defensive line. OL and... I feel like the D-line's already pretty good. We're going to go linebacker instead. And let's see if we can beat the Patriots. Not going to play this year either. Year three is going to be the time where we jump in, play the moments, as we beat the New England Patriots 27-21. Again, I can see it in the top left. My face cam's covering it. Uh, we are advancing, though. And... Do we have any skill points, perhaps? No. Ooh, Jordan Cross actually got one. He's actually turning out to be a decent pick. He's up to a 78 overall his rookie year. So I do like that. He's a pretty good player. This was a solid pick. 88 zone coverage. I've been really going all into zone. That's what four zone upgrades will do. But can we beat the LA Chargers? Almost certainly not. They're too overpowered in sim. As we got killed. 34 to 7. 34 to 7, man. Ugh. Do we bring back Fear Amir? I think we do. Um, no, we can't. We can't afford him. If we want to target anybody in free agency, I can't bring back Amir Abdullah. Just can't happen. Jaguars beat the Rams 37-31 in the Super Bowl, by the way. And I'm going to turn off auto scouting through simulation so we can actually scout some players. Show me a center. Yannick Ngakwe is here. And another Jaguar, Miles Jack. Yannick Ngakwe has got to be one of the most underrated players in the NFL. I know he's a 95 overall in this league right now, but he does not get the love. Love Yannick Ngakwe. Um, he's been so good in the NFL so far. So overlooked. And, yeah, he was even good at Maryland. Doesn't really appear to be a usable center here. So, that's bad. And it's just simulated to the draft, it looks like. Not a great center class. Ugh. NFL draft time. I don't know what I want to target here. We pick 23rd overall. Not the best draft position. We should still be able to make our pick count. And then we pick three picks later at 26. What can we do here? Who's even available? There's no one that I want at a position of need here. It's very unfortunate. Uh, we could take a backup running back. That might be the move here, unfortunately. That might be our best option. The offensive line quality is just not here. We're going to take a running back. Derek Kidd out of LSU. He's so slow. What about Ross McKenzie? 442 speed. We're taking him. 79 overall. Quick development. Rank number 16 in the class. Obviously not a reach. Good backup running back. Can't afford to pay Amir Abdullah. We'll take the next best thing. Next better thing, honestly. A 1 and a 4 this year and a 3 next year gets us Cody Whitehair. He obviously is our new starting center. That's pretty much the draft for us. We don't have a pick until the seventh round. I doubt we're going to be able to make that count. I just think that trading these picks for bona fide players is the move for a team like this. Cody Whitehair, we needed to step in, get a center. He's going to be just that good starting center. So necessary. Fourth round guy here in the seventh. We don't really know anything about him. Might as well take him anyway. 64 overall. He's very bad. Doesn't look like a fourth round caliber player to me. All right, how'd the rest of the NFL do? I see a couple of 82s, and they're going to lead the pack. 82 overalls out the ass. Um, we wouldn't have had a shot at any of them, so I am okay with that. The best players are at the top of the draft. Shocker. Shocker. Although Roman Franklin in the fourth round is a 78 overall, only normal development. He looks pretty good, though. Not incredible, but pretty good. 
Marcus Cannon is down to a 74 overall. I should have traded him. I, I saw him as a rental, and I didn't treat him as a rental. That's my fault. I should have traded him already. I should have traded him just after we got him, honestly. We could have gotten some value for him. My mistake. Now we need to replace him, probably, if I can. We have, we have a first rounder. If I could trade Marcus Cannon and a first rounder somehow for a decent left tackle, that'd be so good. I think we're just going to have to rock out with uh, Marcus Cannon at right tackle. It's not the best situation. He's not terrible, at least. He's just not good. If you guys are on the same wavelength with me there. We just can't get anybody else. So we're stuck with him. It's unfortunate, but it's the way that it is. It's you know I can't do anything about it. We are in year three. This is the year. We're going to go to the midseason mark, upgrade, and then go to the playoffs. This has got to be a playoff team. Two years back-to-back -back playoffs. The team's only improved. It's got to be a playoff team, season number three. Three, three, and one at the midseason mark. We're going to have to uh, perform a lot better than this. The Broncos are ahead of us. We're going to need to win out, like, pretty much again. Uh... Let's see here. It's going to have to be a wild card spot. I don't see us winning the division. I really don't. Upgrading is complete. The team is a 93 overall. That's 91 offense, 99 defense. It's a very good team. At the end of the day, no matter what we do record-wise, this team is sick. I just... I need them to perform. Sammy Watkins is up to an 87 overall. That might even boost us up even more. Maybe a 94 overall as a team. It's possible. Doesn't look like it. All right. The moment of truth, essentially. Playoff time. We're not. Oh, we missed the playoffs. We went 7 8 and 1 with the best team that we've had the entire thing. All right. Season 4. It has to happen. That's uh, really frustrating, though. So we need to re sign some players. Not Blaine Gabbert. Why are you here? Um, we've got some good ones. They're going to not be cheap. All right, we got re-signed who we need to re-sign. Blaine Gabbert, we didn't touch because it's Blaine Gabbert. Mitchell Schwartz is down to a 77. I can't re-sign him. I don't like him to be a starter. We need to improve both the bookends on the offensive line, left and right tackle. It needs to happen. The interior is all right. Duvernay Tardif is, is going down, which sucks. But such is the way of Madden regression. You got to deal with it, and uh, we're going to have to. Time for free agency and the draft. Sean Watson's here. Buddha Baker's here. This would be uh, probably not a worthwhile signing for us based on personnel. What I will say is that um, I don't get the available funds. All I care about is cap room. I think available funds is like ownership stuff. Um, what do we do here? Ooh, Jason Kelsey's here. We don't need a center right now. Maybe we play him at other position. So we got Jason Kelsey, which means um, somebody's sliding over. Jordan Cherry. 6'2". You're not a tackle. Cody Whitehair is going to slide over to right guard. LDT is going to slide over to right tackle. As I think that probably uh, makes the most sense in terms of ability. And then we just need a left tackle. LDT is good. He is. Smart fella as well. We talked about that a little bit earlier. And uh, his transition to right tackle, I'm sure, will be fine. We need a left tackle, though. Badly. So badly. Went after Sidney Jones. He rejected our offer. I probably should have updated that. I just thought that if we could move like Kendall Fuller into the slot... Or just have that good three cornerback uh, group. It would be just awesome. We do have Jordan Crosses up to an 81 overall. So I didn't boost the money that much. Just felt like it wasn't worth it. Although he would have been nice to have. He's an 89 overall. Buda Baker would have worked too. I mean, we had a number of options. But it is draft time. We are taking a left tackle. That's what's happening. Ravens take a quarterback. Interesting. That's weird. All right. The left tackles are not great. We're going with Kenyatta Simpson out of Mizzou. Good top three skills overall. Very strong. I like that. He's a 74 overall. That's very annoying. He was a second round player. Uh, we tried to just take him early. That looks like it's the reach of the draft so far. 
<laughs> what is going on? We'll go with another tackle. Kerry Martinek. Looks about the same. He's worse. I'm just trying to take a better tackle. It looks like it's not in the cards. We took a running back uh, just for depth. I don't know why. Uh, I didn't really look at anybody else. We just took him. The draft's over. We're ending it. All right, let's see if anybody was super talented in the NFL in this draft. Looks like we got a lot of high overall players. Jamel Burson, cornerback for the Saints, is the highest overall player in the draft. Um, These man cover corners are high overalls, let me tell you. Antonio Marshall's the player I wanted. I should have thought about trading up. He looked really, really good, and he is. He would have been a solid starter, clearly. And it was only like five picks to trade up from where he actually ended up going. I should have done that, I think. Mistakes have been made. This is the team for season number four, the fourth and final season. This was went or has gone on longer than I expected. We're going to simulate to the midseason mark. I anticipate a playoff berth here. It's annoying we didn't do it in season three, despite having the best team, probably in the NFL. Mid-season mark. We are 4-4, four and four, which is good enough for best in the AFC West. We're the best in the West right now. We're going to upgrade this team. 91 offense, 99 defense. This is a team that I need to perform. We need to make the playoffs this year. We can't miss them. We have to. All right, regression starting to hit kind of hard on a lot of players. Eric Berry went down a little bit. Levante David's down. Surprised Justin Houston really hasn't gone down all that much, considering he's 32. I haven't really seen him regress much, if at all. But he almost certainly has. Pat Mahomes is at a 96 overall. Still quick development. 25 years old. And he's a monster. Very, very, very good. Which, of course, you love to see. We're not going to worry about uh, players ready to negotiate. Because this is the final season, no matter what. I'm going to go ahead here with my coach. We're going to go with uh, quarterback training boost. Because why not? Make Mahomes as good as he can be. And we are ready for the playoffs. Please make them. I beg of you. We missed the playoffs. We went 8-8. Eight and eight. What do you mean? What do you mean 8-8? Eight and eight? How? I guess that's going to do it. Kind of an anticlimactic end. But how can I rebuild the team anymore? We took them. They were like, what, an 83 overall? We're sitting at a 93 overall now. The team's very good. It could probably even go up to a 94, and I guess I'll upgrade just to see if it would. But I don't know what else to do other than that. We're just not winning here. Kendall Fuller up to a 97. He's upgraded pretty well over the course of this thing. The defense is still a 90, 99. Will we be able to get to 94 offense? Kareem Hunt's up to a 95. Oh, it's doable, I think. All right, we're going to say it a 93 overall. 99 defense, 93 offense. You do the math on that one, I guess. The team is good, but apparently not good enough. That's going to do it for me, guys. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed, and I'll see you in the next one. Take it easy. Let me know who to rebuild next. Also, it would be a fun one. But, again, take it easy.